Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Audible. So she took away my first few words. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm Ganesh Kumar from Sri Polymer Products in Chennai. So I'm going to talk about not just our ERP next implementation, but more specifically, how we got everybody to participate. So ERP implementation is easy. So how many of us agree with that? So there's a, there's a joke, right? Quitting smoking is easy. I've done it many times. So ERP is a bit like that. So we are often very quick to declare success, right? So implementing is not the problem. Using it is. So most companies have some system or the other, big and small. But is it really giving? Uh, are your employees and your customers finding the difference? Is, is management able to really make decisions based on the information that the system provides? That really gets to the crux of it. So let me start by giving a little bit of introduction about us. Uh, we, are, we manufacture critical uh, polymer components, primarily for the automotive sector. And uh, these are some of the brands that use our product. Now, when we say critical components, what that means is if the part fails, the vehicle will either stop, or not function, or it will become a safety issue. So quality and quality standards are a very important aspect of our industry or our specific niche. So we manufacture about 60 lakh plus components every month across about 120 variants. So that adds a bit of... Uh, complexity in the whole planning process. And uh, we have to comply to IATF 16949 standards, which is an automotive industry specific quality standard. But it is, uh, in my opinion, one of the most stringent standards out there. Uh, involves a lot of documentation and uh, traceability at every level. And we are a process industry. We are not a discrete manufacturing company. So uh, like. Uh, our friend from Trides, I forget, keep missing his name, talked about in the chicken example in the restaurant industry. It's something like that. We just we make 60 lakh chickens or something like that every month. So it's uh, the things can vary. You cannot, uh, unlike in discrete manufacturing where you have a very specific bomb, like for a mobile phone, you have 10 parts co that come together. It's not that way. While we know the proportion of things, Things can change with every batch, and we got to manage that. And there are environmental variables, other things that also play a part in the whole process. And our workforce is predominantly illiterate. We're not a white collar workforce that is going to use the system, especially when we talk about uh, system used by everybody. So these, this is the background in which uh, we started, or we were looking at implementation. Uh, so like Jannat mentioned, there's a prior experience of uh, implementing systems and not having desired results. So we wanted to be very clear of including systems like Microsoft Navision and others that we tried. Uh, but we wanted to be very clear what success looked like. How would we know that we are successful in implementing the system? And one thing we said was it sh we should be able to get rid of spreadsheets. Like if somebody is still looking at Excel and making decisions, then the system's really not working. We are having data in multiple places. Secondly, it's got the, the stock information in the system must be reliable. Now, this may seem like a very uh, simple thing, but actually in, in my personal experience, like we are a supplier to some of the major companies out there, and all of them have good systems, or so-called good systems. But we know for a fact that none of them, the stock that is in their systems does not reflect reality. And we as suppliers face the brunt of that because our production schedules are adjusted on a weekly or a daily basis based on actual line stoppages and other things rather than what the system says. So this is very crucial because as a small, we are not a very large organization. We are an MSME and uh, we cannot have a system for the sake of it. It needs to really work. And for all of this to happen, the transactions that occur have to be logged real time. Because if there is a gap, if I have a separate department which is making entries at the end of the day or whenever it is, there will always, the gap keeps expanding. And uh, that again impacts 
reliability of stock and the decision making and I, that again imp impacts the ability to replace and then you have alternative systems which are used to manage the whole process. So these three uh, almost are interrelated and we defined as uh, markers of success for ourselves. So this gives us, this is an extract of what we call a PPAP document or a product part approval process document. And uh, this defines the various stages uh, that a, a, a sample product goes through. There are about 18 stages. Some will have a few more, some a little less. And uh, imagine now when we are talking about real-time logging and it's going right from purchase to batching to uh, you know, preforming to molding to various other process, each of these stages and dealing with various kinds of constraint, it, it's a quite an involved uh, uh, thing to map out and detail out and this is what we were dealing with. So everybody needs a mantra, right? We needed a mantra to make this happen and, and that was make it easy to make entries. The concept was simple. If we win the battle in getting information into the system accurately, then the rest of it is relatively easy because once you have the right information, you can pull whatever reports you want and then you can enforce management policies or, you know, um, have people look at the data and things of that sort. But if the data isn't there, then really nothing much we could do. So how do we get the data? And that's the really the problem that I've encountered not just in our implementation, but in my career having uh, looked at various organizations. I know I've been associated with an organization that implemented SAP in the 90s in nine months and it was a record at that point in time and I know it was nothing more than a glorified email system at that point. So, so how do we really get it to work? And that is the crux is easy entries. Make it very easy to make entries and make it very difficult to put the wrong information. So if we, these were the two things that we focused on and how, how do you get there? By uh, putting some intelligence into your screens or your entry format. So we had some smart screens which would automatically identify the context. It would identify and pre-populate a lot of information so that the amount of entry actually that was done was manually was very less. We automated uh, information gathering from weighing systems and machines and all of that so that the amount of manual entry is minimized and a lot of context is built in. So what this resulted in is people at every stage making entries. And these, these are the people who actually use the system. We don't have a separate, we do have a team that checks the quality and you know, runs the reports and makes sure that everything is okay. But the fundamental entries and the system logging, transaction logging happens by people on the shop floor and who are actually using the, you know, producing things. Yeah. So this is a video of that. I think there's no audio. So, Faris yesterday was talking about his moment of joy when he saw uh, a pixel perfect icon or something to that effect, right? So this is my moment of joy when I look at people like these who make entries. And it is not just that they make entries, you know, it's a moment of participation for them. They are a part of the change that is organ occurring in the organization rather than being driven to a change that has been mandated. So that creates, I cannot explain in words the kind of involvement that creates. And at this point, I think I want to pause and also uh, convey my gratitude to all those who made this possible. So one is of course uh, ERP Next and Frappe with, uh, starting with Rishabh who was the first person I interacted with, then it was Faraz, then there was Simran and Rijul who were, I don't think here anymore, Umair of course. I've interacted with during the initial implementation stages and our current partners who helped us uh, put various screens together are uh, Tridot Technologies, I think Rajarajan and his wife are here and, uh, and uh, also the team in Chennai, Karthik and Gopi who actually worked with us. So they're uh, uh, a good shout out to them and uh, my man Friday within my company Arun who sort of, uh, sort of anchors this whole process. So, really thankful uh, for making this happen. And we have a long way to go, but it's a good start. Yeah. So, yeah. So, the, uh, so what, what, what really happens, let's look at the screens. Uh, one is an example of it. So one is uh, basically one shop floor entry could result in six to eight different entries on ERP next. Um, 
So, this is for example an entry which uh, has two processes that uh, happen in sequence, but all based on the selection of the screen and uh, certain you know options are pre filtered and that will be a select field and then you have scanned fields where they scan the batches that they are pulling in and these are just the entries manual entries that they make and based on this there are two work orders generated, two job cards and then stock entries all done in sequence with batch validations and all of that in the back end. So, this is something like you saw in the video we wanted the entries to be done not more than 30 seconds to 1 minute at the maximum. So, a person should not be uh, because a person on the shop floor has a different mindset anything that is not contributing to his incentive I mean people have targets and things that have to be achieved at a you know time bound manner and uh, anything that is not contributing to that is a uh, waste of time. So, it has got to be easy and it has got to help. So, uh, this helps and uh, people actively ask for new features and uh, various other things. So, that is this is where this is this is really the meat of what really we did. So, what did this result in? Uh, as uh, we are now able to really fly by wire or in the sense not necessarily go into the shop floor, but the system reflects information. So, we have production reports that come out at the end of every shift or pretty much almost real time as the shift uh, gets done or near real time. So, we know what products were produced, what were consumed, what presses were tools were used and also the rejections. There are line rejections where we monitor quality through uh, the production process and also lot rejections all of that gets populated automatically. We have stock reports that are uh, near real time. So, we know what material is available where and what stages and uh, there are also subcontracted processes. So, we know what has gone out and not come in and in what stage it is. So, from an operational point of view there are of course, multiple reports and to go through the whole uh, shebang will take a couple of hours probably, but this gives you a flavor of what we have done. So, operationally these things help us manage and also we have created dashboards on top of this. This is a quality dashboard uh, which pulls data from ERP next and then we have uh, trend uh, information uh, by type of rejection, uh, date wise and things like that by the compound or the source material and things like that. So, this really helps us uh, in our review meetings and elevates the quality of discussion and the, uh, the quality of management that we are able to achieve. So, uh, this is what we have done and this is how we have uh, I would think pushed uh, the use of the system across uh, all aspects of our organization. So, the real question is what next? So, we have established a baseline of operational use of the system. The next step for us is to implement the entire QMS on ERP next. So, let me give you a uh, sort of a sense of why the quality management system is so uh, complicated or something that we are focusing on. One is uh, the, uh, the the standard that I mentioned the automotive standard 16949 is a derivative of the ISO 9001 which uh, most people would have heard if and the ISO 9001 standard uh, when uh, it was also the mother of the aerospace industry standard. So, you would think aerospace is a very quality conscious thing. When the aerospace guys added 5 classes to the ISO 9000 standard, the automotive guys have added 65 classes to the ISO 9000 and it keeps getting added every year. So, it just it is a lot of documentation at every stage from the vendor point from uh, you know uh, the tool management to everything. So, getting all that documentation in there all those processes covered is our next goal and parallelly we are also looking at uh, integrating a lot of IOT uh, related information into the system. Uh, we are putting sensors in our ovens in our presses and feeding that data and we want uh, because all of that ties into batch information and productivity and all of that it comes together essentially to implement uh, industry 4.0 which is a much bandied term, but from our point of view it is the ability to pull all that information that is available uh, and be able to make real time decisions on it. So, that is where and this is a journey I think uh, over the next year or two hopefully we will get somewhere and we cannot do this alone right and uh, uh, any inputs uh, anybody who has had experience in doing this please do I would be grateful if people reach out and uh, support us in that journey. 
but uh, so that is uh, uh, basically it. If there are any questions, I am happy to answer.